Dodo Mashinani. The boat is gone. The Shauriao wa me onroka kwenda. Let us now please our friends at WWF move it to Kosau. A few days later they did. Now, there's a lot of supplementary information I can give you to assert and, and confirm the interference of WWF and the fact that no senior officer ever in the police, and Mr. Bamao, you can tell me, you cannot exceed your authority. It's just not possible for, for somebody to wake up and say, I'm acting DG, I haven't got a board, so I'm going to do it myself. You either keep quiet and you leave it to the authority of the board until it's reappointed, or somebody above you in, in the Kenya system picks up the phone and says, Kimani, Tumani Zimaneno. But only Kimani can tell you that. I stop there for the moment. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hitler, for that insightful information. Dr. Kutsama. Let me now uh, invite the members who are not introduced themselves to introduce themselves. And then we'll start them in Kangoko. Yes, my name is Kangoko Bowen. I'm a member of the Parliament Marako East and also a member of the state. Yeah, I'm a Peter Kehara, MP for Madia Constituency in Murana County, and I'm a member of this community. I'm Charlie Kabani Chakwani, member of Parliament, Yoro Constituency, Nakul County, the member of the community. Chai Chubanya is my name, I'm a member of the community. We are all friends, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we serve in, in this house in this house. Pardon, sir? When did you serve? You are used to be a former member of Parliament. How many days? I stop. In Safina, <laughs> and after, I got into trouble with the boss. <laughs> and, and after, <laughs> there's a limit of my patience. So I went back, and then if you, some of you may not remember, <coughs> but, uh, then he asked me to go and work for him to get the IMF back to Kenya and to build the dream team. And that's how that happened. Welcome, Mishima. Welcome to welcome back to the As Asante. And you were one of us, and now we have a club of the wood. Yes. Former members of Parliament, and there was a meeting yesterday in Safari Park. We, we do not see you there. So now, let us open the floor to the members so that they can be able to ask further questions, and they can be able to direct to you, and then any other member can be able to answer. Mishima. Asante. And please speak up a bit. Okay, I will. You may watch your ski or up. Who's the planet? Who's the planet? Actually, one thing which I want to understand is there's this pressure which you talk of from WWF. Why would WWF insist on this transportation being done? And they may be aware of this condition which the border said that for translocation to take place, they want the issue has to be sorted. Why must they put pressure on the on the on the on the government, the, the minister of the, the ministry people, to then pressure kind of place for this finals to be moved? And then secondly, you that if you are given uh, orders which are not in uh, which are not right. You are not, as a public officer, as maybe somebody in charge of Kenya Place, for example, the acting director, shouldn't follow it. So in this case now, because you say Kimani participated in all the meetings of the board, where the board said that unless the water issue is sorted, this rhino should not be moved. If Kimani, maybe some pressure was put on Kimani and he agreed for it to be moved for some reason, who should we blame? Is it Kimani for obeying something which he shouldn't have obeyed in the first place because he's still the person, he's private to all the information, or these other forces from somewhere which is trying to push him for the translocation to take place? Let, let me try and answer it two ways, with respect. I don't think it's a question of blame. It's a question of who's responsible. I think it's different. And I think to apportion blame 
is a different sitting to the august committee of the House. <coughs> We're not judges. <laughs> we, we, we are trying to get the actual evidence of what happened. So the responsible officer, in my opinion, was the senior most officer, and that was Kimani. And I know that he was present at all of the meetings where we said no. So he knew. Why was WWF in such a rush? You know, we'd have to ask them specifically, but I'll tell you what I think. WWF raised money by going to the newspapers, going to magazines, going to television, and saying these poor animals in Africa are dying. The, uh, the, the, the people in Africa are good lakini see good sana. Hmm? And they, they need help, they need money. <coughs> so if you give WWF money, we will, we will help the Kenyans by building a sanctuary. And so I think they hatched this idea of a, and it's not a bad idea, to build a big sanctuary, 100,000 kilometers in Savo. They did not do adequate survey of the site, because if they had, they would have known the water was no good. They went ahead and built a beautiful fence, electric fence, and not a dead sana. It would make the game ranches in the north very jealous. <laughs> Piping water and everything, boreholes. Looking in his soul. So I think what happened after three, four years, where when I say my kamatia liki nakata, 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 kichwangumu, Hmm? I think eventually they said, he's gone to Nahuruzas. Let's, let's get it done with and let us get credit from our donors that the project is finished, a big tick. We want to raise more money. And we have letters to that effect. And so I think WWF wanted it for perfectly understandable reasons. They wanted a success story on their, on their books. They were aware of the water project. They didn't believe us, but they were aware of it. But they couldn't get past the board because the board is made up of ladies and, and gentlemen who were very experienced and knowledgeable. And we had an advisor and we had all sorts of advice coming in on this. And it was, it was no way we could have agreed to that. And, and I think there was a sort of gap, and I'm not sure who the man in charge of WWF is called.